Oh dear. Oh no. Oh dear. I'm gonna have to shoot you. Hey everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all Kebola's games on the Wii. Kebola's Big Game Hunter is the first in the Wii series, so we can excuse it for having some flaws. For the most part, it's an engaging hunting game. The controls are great, you get a good deal of weapons, a good deal of locales, like usual in this series, and the hunting is fun. What I didn't like in the game was the lack of a minimap and the many invisible barriers that, because I didn't have a minimap, were more frequent. The only map you have is when you open your PDA from the start menu. The hunter vision and the slow motion ability when aiming are nice, so overall the gameplay is enjoyable. But the game has some flaws. But aside of the invisible barriers, it's nothing significant, so for the most part, it's an okay game and pretty enjoyable. And also after replaying every Kebola's game on the Wii for the sake of this review, I can say that it still remains one of my favorites. Kebola's Trophy Box is still a good game, but it's severely unpolished in my opinion. The controls feel kinda awkward, the objectives aren't as fun, even if they are kinda the same as always. The graphics are worse than in the previous game, they look ugly and good at the same time in my eyes. I don't know, it's a love and hate relationship with the graphics. And even if you get Hunter Vision, X-Ray Vision and Laser Bullets, because the AI is so brain dead, the game loses its charm. Also the gameplay is arcade. It's ok, but you would have much more fun playing this game at the arcades than playing it at home on your Wii. What I mean is that at the arcades you usually go with friends and you put coins in and try to beat the score, there's a thrill in that. But this game played at home, especially alone, is pretty boring. Sure, there are 25 maps to play in, the game offers, but the gameplay feels the same in all those 25 locations. No matter that you hunt deer or birds, the gameplay somehow feels the same. At least to me it felt the same. So while the game isn't broken and the gameplay is ok, for me it felt bland, which led to it feeling repetitive. And if you want to play it with friends, sure, it's much more fun than playing alone. But still, there are better Wii games out there. Kepler's Legendary Adventures has a short but great story. You play as Walter Graham starting from 1933 and using old western weapons to hunt animals is great, it has a certain charm to it. Also I like that the objectives are more loose in the game, usually you're put on a map and as a side objective you are given some targets, but the main objective is very simple. By finding and completing animal skull challenges you raise your hunter's IQ, and when you have level 3 IQ you start hunting the legendary animal of that area. And you do this in all the areas of the game, so beware that the game gets very repetitive. And because you have to explore for animals, it kinda feels slow paced. The controls could do better, they are they feel a little janky. Still, they are good, but could be a little better too. Anyway, the game is okay. The plot and charm of the game will keep you hooked, even if it has some shortcomings and it feels slow and repetitive. Kebula's Dangerous Hunts 2009 has a nice plot, which fits the franchise perfectly. You play as Flint Abrahams, a guy who travels the world to find the most dangerous hunts. There is a difference in comparison to other games and some may like it, but others probably not. You have a timer which forces you to rush each level to find your target animal. You also feel more powerful than in other games, I mean you feel like you're commando in the maps. You kill everything on sight till you find your target animal. Also, on your way, because you don't have a minimap, you will run into plenty of invisible walls, again. And the ability to run in the game would have been useful, but it's not in the game unfortunately. And this is a downside when you want to create some space between you and the predator. Also mission objectives are many times unclear, and count that with invisible barriers and you'll bash your head against plenty of walls. In my opinion, they had a good idea to make it more action packed, but the execution turned out to be very poor. Kebola's Outdoor Adventures has a very nice mechanic. If you fail a shot and the animal runs away, you can rewind to a checkpoint and try again. This is very nice considering that for an animal you have to roam a map. Look for traces of the animal, eventually lure it, and missing the shot will mean to start all over again. Well, now you have a checkpoint, which is nice. In rest you get again weapons, lures and stuff, again there are invisible walls that get very annoying, 
I would have loved to have a minimap, but at least you get a normal map in the menu. The game also has fishing in it, but the fishing feels more like a minigame. You don't get complex mechanics like in other fishing games. You do have multiple lures and a radar, and you can roam the lake to find fish like in a normal fishing game, but the fishing itself, at least in my opinion, is mostly just a few button presses. Fish bite right away. It's a satisfying mechanic, but still, the fishing feels more like a quick time event slash minigame than a considerable portion of the gameplay. But overall the game still is okay. Kebula's Big Game Hunter 2010 is awesome, but it's no game for hardcore gamers though. Because the game is super simple, you get 12 levels, and in each the gameplay goes like this. You follow the conveniently put waypoints on the linear maps, gun down the animal shown, and proceed in the same way to the next animal. And at the end of each level there is a big predator. That's the formula. It's simple, it's repetitive, yet I love the game. Instead of bumping into invisible walls, the game told me where to go. Instead of just giving me the impression of a big space, like in other games. Also the missions have a good pacing. They deliver a satisfying experience. A repetitive one, yes, but a satisfying one for sure. Bullet moments are plenty, and it just makes you feel good. But beware, this is no game for hardcore players, as I said, or players who want a challenge. The game is super easy to beat, but if you're a casual gamer and want to find a relaxing, non-frustrating game to play on a lazy afternoon, you can try this one, it's great. Kebula's Monster Bug Hunter has made the shooting gallery mode of the game much more fun. Before you were given some targets. Now the mode becomes an on-rails shooter. The controls are arcade, there are 12 long levels of this and the purpose is to reach the high score. You have two weapons and if you want to get enough points, you will need to constantly switch between the weapons. Because for example you get more points for shooting birds with the shotgun than with the rifle and vice versa. You get less points if you shoot them with the rifle but get more points if you shoot a deer with the rifle for example. And the mode works out incredibly well, it's fun to play. The career mode on the other hand is with a bonus in the menu because they were lazy. They copied the levels from trophy box. In the career mode you get an area to roam in where you get shooting challenges and specific target hunts. The story element is barely present which means that you're like in the old days thrown onto a map and have to get on your own so basically this is trophy box, but with 12 levels of arcade on rails shooter added to the mix. So don't buy trophy box because you get this included if you buy monster bug hunter. Kebula's North American Adventures feels similar to outdoor adventures, only that it has a different story and in it you have a hunting show. So in the levels you can put up cameras and then go for the kill and you can film the kill. Also you can photograph animals, you can customize your rifles, you get again big sandbox areas with many invisible walls, though this time the map design is better, I've encountered less walls. In Rust the gameplay is good, locations and animals are diverse, I think you get 25 locations, and if you liked outdoor adventures, then you're going to like this one for sure, because the two have the same vibe. Kebula's Dangerous Hunts 2011 has a nice story of a son proving to his dad that he's a great hunter. The gameplay has the formula for running and gunning game, you still get some methodical sections but mostly you run into so many wild beasts that attack you that you are either swarmed by animals or you have to bash through lines of them in order to progress in the game. The gameplay has an arcade feel and I like it. The game manages to have some nice dramatic moments in the story. It can put up a challenge, and it's a game I totally recommend. The gameplay is nice, the story is nice, the presentation is nice, the controls are nice. It's a nice game overall. Kebula's Big Game Hunter 2012 is horrible, and that because of the frame rate. The game is more of a slideshow than a game, and this drags down the whole experience. Oh, you want to aim? Well, keep her steady, because it's gonna take some frames till you get the crosshair right. In Rust the gameplay is the same as in the others, only that now you get a different story, but considering how horrible it runs, I recommend you to skip this one. It's not worth the bad experience for a story you're most probably going to forget anyway, 
and the gameplay is just subpar because of the frame rate. But if you aren't bothered by the frame rate, it's a really good game. It's linear, it focuses on the action just like Big Game Hunter 2010. Actually, you could call it a Big Game Hunter 2010, but one that tries to pull off PS3 graphics at a really low resolution and has performance issues because of it. Still, the core gameplay is similar, so if you like casual games and really aren't bothered by the frame rate, and by that I mean to play the game at around a constant 20 FPS that drops even lower than that, try the game. You're gonna like it. I mean, the formula is really good, but as I said, play it only if you accept a sub-30 frame rate. Cabalas Adventure Camp is a minigame collection. You get 8 minigames and there is a competition mode where you can choose each day which discipline you want to tackle, or you can let the computer decide. Any way you put it, you play 8 minigames. And I'm impressed, not necessarily by the gameplay because it feels like standard stuff if you've played other minigame collections on the Wii, aside of Rock Paper Scissors, that one's new. But the graphics look like I'm playing on a PS3, which is impressive considering that the Wii isn't as powerful. Overall, while the visuals are impressive and the gameplay is good, because the game has only 8 minigames, as polished as they are, at the end of the day you get only 8 minigames. They get mixed, shuffled and reshuffled, but that's not going to change the fact that they are 8, which means that you can breeze through all of the game's content in less than an hour. Sure, the game is fun and polished, it's great if you want to rent the game and to try it out, but if you buy it, it will just gather dust on your shelf, because you play the 8 minigames and then get bored of it or get caught up in other games that are more engaging. Kebla Survival Shadow of Katmei is more of a mountain climbing game than a hunting game. 80% of the game you climb. You do use some over the shoulder shooting to kill some animals, yes, but most of the game you just climb. And I know, it sounds boring, but because of the great soundtrack and interesting story, it kept me hooked, so even if the game sounds boring, it, it isn't. I can't necessarily call it a hidden gem, but it's a great game for sure. You also get some steering sections that spice things up, but a complaint I have with the game is the frame rate. It dips. But it's interesting that even if I was bothered by the frame rate in Kebola's Big Game Hunter 2012, I wasn't bothered here. Somehow, even if the frame rate turned into a slideshow in some moments, I wasn't bothered by it in Shadows of Catme. Kebola's Dangerous Hunts 2013 is ambitious. When the game was released, in the box there was a sensor called Wii Vitality Sensor that measured your heart rate. And if your heart started beating faster, you got penalties. But if you kept your heartbeat at a normal level, then you could zoom farther. And if you kept your hand steady and shot calmly, you dealt more damage. And you've got a steady shot bonus. So if you get agitated and shoot frantically, you're going to have it harder with the game. Also, if you don't have the sensor, don't worry, I didn't have it either. I bought the game used without a sensor, so you can play it normally too. Also, the special gun in the box had two sensors, and you had to hold the controller in an uncomfortable position. As for the game modes, you get the campaign, the on rails shooter part, and a co-op mode called Man Eater, where you and a friend shoot waves of animals. Also, you can play the Man Eater mode in single player too. You can play it alone. The campaign is straightforward and is dramatic, it even has some epic moments. I love that they added the option to run in the game and I like the way the game shows you where you have to go. And also the campaign has some epic moments. It's a really nicely made game and with the three modes it feels like a complete package. I'm impressed by what the Cabula series is achieving. Cabula's Hunting Expeditions is pretty good. The game isn't a run and gun game though, it's actually pretty methodical. You need to watch out to not startle animals and for some reason the distance at which animals get startled isn't as close as you would think, but it's alright because the gameplay is nice. You travel in your ATV and hunt the target animal. You need to watch your step, trace the animal and get closer and closer until the final confrontation or the final blow. The game is great. 
it's more methodical, the graphics are awesome, it has a new mechanic, the strategic view that shows you from an aerial point of view your targets and eventual spots from which you can shoot. The game can get tough at times because of its requirements, but still, it's a very good hunting game. Kebula's African Adventures is incredible. What I like most about the game is that it's fast paced. The vehicle mechanics makes the game fast paced, actually the whole game feels very fast paced. I know that hunting takes time and preparation and that that has its own charm. But going as fast as the wind through the savanna, gunning down some animals and cruising again with the jeep feels very good. Once again like in other Kebula's games you have lures, a nice amount of weapons and multiple maps. I also like how varied the locales feel, considering that they are in the same biome. Also the game has a plot with nicely drawn cutscenes and animations and the story itself is pretty good too. So overall the game is amazing, it's fast paced, the presentation and the story is great, the gameplay is great and it manages to keep everything good in this series while making you feel like an action movie star. And there could have been another Kabbalah schemes, Kabbalah's monster base, but it got cancelled. 